Thanks for joining us today. Welcome to the Center for States video series on readiness. This series is produced by the Capacity Building Center for States and funded by the Children's Bureau. Before starting this series, have you read the readiness brief and completed the first section of the readiness workbook? If not, we recommend you take some time to complete these steps and then return here to where you left off. Before we begin, we'd like you to take a few minutes to consider your experience with readiness to address a problem or need. Can you think of a time when you had to make a decision about something and knew you were not ready? What happened? Have you ever tried to solve a problem and could not get others engaged in helping you? Have you ever tried to solve a problem and realized you may not have everything you needed in order to complete it? What did you do? Did you have to adjust plans? Use your readiness workbook to write down your answers to these questions. Remember, you can pause this video at any time to record your thoughts and refer to them as you complete all five videos in the series. Assessing readiness helps agencies prepare for a successful change initiative and proactively build capacity in needed areas. Taking a moment to ensure the right supports are in place before assessing readiness can help teams document where they are in the change and implementation process and inform focus on key readiness milestones. Teams can assess readiness for change once a problem or need has been identified, but before a specific intervention has been selected to address it, as well as assess readiness after an intervention has been selected for intervention-specific readiness. Having the following in place before assessing readiness sets teams up for success. A team with a diverse expertise and representation to guide the change in implementation process. A clearly identified problem. An analysis of the root cause or causes of the problem. A theory of change that reflects a clear pathway from the problem to a desired long-term outcome and have identified an appropriate intervention to address the root cause or causes of the problem. If your team has not achieved these milestones yet, please take some time to review the Change in Implementation and Practice series, including Problem Exploration, Theory of Change, Teaming, and Intervention Selection, Adaptation, and Design. The illustration on the slide represents the change in implementation process and the relationships between the different topics and steps highlighted. Assessing organizational readiness on the outer ring is ongoing throughout the process, while teaming on the inner ring is a key consideration during all other activities. Each icon in the second ring represents an important step in the change and implementation process. While the icons are represented sequentially, in practice there will often be overlap and movement back and forth among the activities. While it is particularly important to consider before implementation begins, Readiness is ongoing and dynamic. Assessing readiness throughout a change initiative can help an agency plan to put key supports in place during each phase of the process. When organizational readiness is high, effective and sustained implementation of a new program or practice is more likely. But when readiness is low, change in implementation efforts are more likely to fail. A quick note on readiness. Because it is dynamic and ever-changing, it helps to think about readiness on a continuum. Assessing readiness is less about a pass-fail mindset and more an activity that helps teams discover where they are strong or fully ready versus areas where they are partially ready. These discoveries help teams know where to focus efforts to fill or acknowledge gaps when moving toward implementation. Research describes two key types of readiness. Readiness for implementation is the extent to which an organization is willing and able to put in place and sustain a selected intervention. Readiness for change is the extent to which an organization is willing and able to pursue efforts directed at improving outcomes. To assess both types of readiness, organizations need to go through an assessment process. A readiness assessment is the act of measuring how prepared an organization is for a major change and or a new intervention. Teams can use an equation developed by a group of readiness researchers in 2015 to help them remember the three core components of readiness for implementation, 
R equals MC squared. Or said another way, readiness equals one part motivation and two parts capacity. Motivation is the willingness or desire to change and to adopt an intervention and is often reflected in the beliefs, attitudes, and commitment of those involved with the change. General or foundational capacity includes the aspects of an organization's healthy functioning, such as infrastructure, resources, or knowledge and skills. For example, an agency with strong general capacity might have effective leadership, appropriate staff for the intervention, and clear expectations and procedures for how things are done. The agency must also be adaptable and have structures in place that support a change process, such as strong data systems to explore needs and track changes, and training systems to build new skills. Intervention-specific capacity is the human, technical, and physical conditions needed to effectively implement a particular program or practice. Things like specific knowledge, skills, structures, and supports needed for a specific intervention. The readiness brief is intended to help child welfare agency leaders, managers, and stakeholders determine an approach to assessing readiness and understand the key factors that influence it. It does this by providing a step-by-step -step approach to, to assessing readiness throughout the change and implementation process. Readiness is broken down into three functions or tasks. One, consider the factors that contribute to readiness. Two, develop an assessment approach. And three, conduct the assessment and analyze findings. In this video series, we are expanding on the core essential functions to illustrate the ongoing and dynamic nature of readiness, to systematically look at the factors that influence it, and then discuss the steps to assessment. In this module, we will kick off our conversation about readiness by discussing the purpose of assessing readiness and why it is foundational to successful change efforts. Why do implementation teams assess readiness? The research tells us that when organizations clearly understand the components of readiness and can efficiently assess the factors that influence it, that this actually contributes to being more ready. Assessing readiness helps to identify gaps and where agencies might need additional support. It helps to prepare team members and the organization as a whole for change initiatives and sets the foundation for a new intervention. When organizational readiness is high, change and implementation efforts are more likely to succeed. Let's take a minute to discuss different components of readiness and why it is important to consider the factors that influence them. So why should organizations consider the factors of motivation that contribute to readiness? For change to take hold, agency leaders, managers, workers, and other stakeholders must value change and be willing to do what it takes to make it happen. An organization can have lots of capacity, but if it lacks desire and incentive to achieve the change, then the intervention will struggle to be realized. As mentioned previously, the equation for readiness, R equals MC squared, contains two capacity components. The factors that influence both general and intervention-specific capacity are foundational to successful change. While the M in the equation, motivation to change, could be high, if general capacity to change and capacity to implement a specific intervention are not addressed, the intervention is unlikely to succeed. Assessing general capacity reflects an agency's strong and healthy functioning that will affect its ability to put in place any program, practice, or change and achieve goals. For example, a culture receptive to change, strong data, or training systems. Intervention-specific capacity looks at the specific conditions needed to implement a selected program, practice, or change. For example, specific knowledge and skill of the intervention, implementation supports, and relationships that will facilitate implementation. To make sure that all of these elements are in place or gaps are accounted for, teams need to plan for assessment. Let's talk a little bit more about that now. Developing an assessment approach and taking time to conduct and analyze readiness assessments are two essential functions of readiness assessment. Why do teams take the time to use a structured method to decide on an assessment approach? 
to be deliberate and strategic in planning an assessment that will provide comprehensive and sound information. Why do teams use a structured approach to conduct readiness assessments and analyze the findings? To reveal strengths and capacity needs that may impact implementation and to inform implementation planning and capacity building. Taking time to be deliberate about assessing readiness can set teams up for success and ensure that the necessary supports are in place for implementation. Let's take a moment to check in on what you've learned about why child welfare agencies should make efforts to assess readiness for change in implementation. Why should implementation teams assess readiness? to improve readiness, identify gaps, prepare for change, and set the foundation for a new intervention. Why should teams understand the factors that influence readiness? To ensure that motivation, general capacity, and intervention-specific capacity are established enough to ensure success of the change initiative. Why should teams use a structured approach to develop and conduct an assessment approach and then analyze results? To be strategic in planning a comprehensive and sound assessment that will reveal strengths and needs to implement an intervention or change. Now, take this a step further by reviewing the reflection questions and practice exercises for why do a readiness assessment in your readiness workbook to connect what you've learned to your own experience. Up next is consider factors that contribute to readiness, the second module in the Readiness for Change and Implementation series. This video was created by the Capacity Building Center for States, funded by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Administration for Children and Families, Children's Bureau, under contract HHS p 233 c the content of this video does not necessarily reflect the official views of the Children's Bureau.